We are staying at the homestay in Farmstay. Farmstay in Kathy. <laughs> they found a snake, so they're moving the 10 o'clock tour to the 11 o'clock tour now. And I'm kind of just using up whatever's in the fridge and in the caravan. We wouldn't recommend people to come rushing here to do it. It's not the best caves that we've done. If you just look this way, it looks like no one else is here. Just you look that way, <laughs> it's pretty busy. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we are heading into the Northern Territory. But before we get into that, our good mates, Alex and Aaron from Now or Never are in the process of organizing Camp for a Cure 2025. And it's gonna be held on the May long weekend at Gucci Creek Escape. At the moment, it's a save the date. So chuck it in your calendars and don't forget to head to the description below to check out the link. We've pulled up at Camel Wheel to get fuel, have some lunch, and we're super glad that we went and got fuel first because there's actually a massive lineup. There was like three vans in front of us and having a look at it now just behind me here, I think there's about seven or eight vans all lining up ready to go. See you later, Queensland. Oh, bumpy road already. Come on, Northern go. Territory, don't do this to us. We're into the territory. <laughs> as soon as we changed from Queensland to Northern Territory, it was like, whoop. We have heard that the road has taken a bit of a turn in the last year or so. Yeah, I think it was just the last wet season that's sort of done a bit of a number on this road. There's a couple of sections that are a bit slow going. So I had the cruise control on and the range has got adaptive cruise. So it picks up the road signs and um, yeah, it sort of changes the speed to suit. And it just said, oh, we're about to go to 130. So we just started taking off down the road. <laughs> Our first night back in the Northern Territory and it is nothing exciting. We are just at a roadside stop. We actually tried to stay at a really nice camp next to this billabong a little bit further on from Barclay Homestead. But there was a huge bus parked in there taking up probably enough room for six caravans or six other campers which was such a shame so we couldn't get any room there and we've had to move up the road another 20 minutes or so this one's not on wiki camps or anything it's just literally a gravel dirt patch on the side of the road it's already five o'clock so we're just gonna have dinner do some editing hop into bed and then do it all again tomorrow we'll catch you then between Barclay Homestead and Three Ways. There are a couple of flood damaged areas through here and the road is pretty average with some potholes and stuff, but it's good. The uh, Northern Territory Government have like signed everything, reduced speed and tell you where it is. So hopefully it won't be too long until it's all fixed. After a massive day of driving, we thought may as well stop in at Daily Waters for a pint. We're not gonna stay here tonight. It's only 3.30 in the afternoon, so we're gonna drop in for a drink and then we're gonna to head to a free camp just out of town. Yeah, so I'm gonna get one beer and Chelsea's gonna get white girl wasted. No, I can drive. Oh, okay, all right, deal. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. I uh, didn't take much convincing, hey? <laughs> oh, Juice is gonna be so keen to get out of the car. He's been such a good boy. After a drink at the Daily Waters pub, we have found a free camp for tonight. Wasn't very far from Daily Waters. I'm pretty sure they were fully booked up as well. There might have only been overflow available even if we did want to stay the night. But a nice big free camp on our own will do us just nicely. Check this out. Dinner by the canopy tonight because it is way too hot in the caravan. Two nights ago we were in Mount Isa and it was like chuck a funny on this time of night and you're really kind of rugging up for the night. Whereas here it's like, I think it's about 30 degrees still, but it's nice to be in the territory and back in the heat. Is it? And that's me saying it because I was outside the whole time while Chelsea was actually <laughs> cooking carbonara in the stove, actually in the heat. So It was so hot in there. I don't think Bryce understands. Yeah, time to tuck in. <laughs> We are on the road about 8 o'clock this morning on our way to Mataranka. 
Now at Matarenka there is a few places you can stay there and there's also national park camping as well. But where we want to stay, which is dog friendly, is right outside Bitter Springs. I think it's called Bitter Springs Caravan and Camping, but we'll drop it here. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to get in there nice and early because you can't book, so it's first in, first serve. And we want to get power for tonight so that Juice can hang out in the air con while we do duck into Bitter Springs and maybe Matarinka Thermal Pops. Alrighty, a little tip for everyone at home. Um, when you see these little white plugs on your windows starting to move out and not sit flush, it's probably because your window screws have started to loosen. Check this one out. And you can't quite push it in. It's actually because the screw has loosened up. So I've been just using a pair of tweezers to flick the little plugs out. I'll show you. When it wants to come out. And then look at this, look how much this will turn, this will do up. Just about all the way. Alrighty, we're about to go head to Bitter Springs. We've never been here in the dry season, in the peak time. We've only ever been here in the wet, so it's going to be interesting to see how busy it actually is in the springs. So Bitter Springs, if you haven't been here before, it's a bit of a lazy river. It's nice and warm and you just take a noodle or a floaty and just float around. We are leaving Juice in the caravan because it is National Park. Okay, we're walking into Bitter Springs at the moment and it's actually not as busy as we thought, so oh, far anyway. Yeah, so far. It might surprise us once we get there, but the car park's not full and we haven't seen heaps of people walking around, so we might have either just snagged a good time or maybe we were just hyping it up for nothing. Now, I'm pretty sure they found a saltwater crocodile in here about a month ago, but there might be enough people swimming at the moment that our odds are pretty good especially if there's children around. Good to go. <laughs> Well, good morning. Chelsea's has found herself a little bit of a friend this morning. At first I was like, oh my gosh, is that a spider? But no, it's a frog. It's he's a frog. Found his way inside the caravan. I wonder how he got in. I think he's been in there for a week. No, I don't reckon. I just don't know how he's got through because this is closed. Are these not sealed properly? Okay, mate. Next spot is the Mataranka Thermal Pools in Elsie National Park. So this one is a man-made structure. Um, it makes use of the hot springs here and gives you an awesome big pool area. If you do want to, you can actually camp right next to these hot um, springs as well. Um, but we've chosen to go towards Bitter because that's our favourite. Well, we've managed to snag it again at a decent time and we've got it pretty well to ourselves this end anyway. <laughs> if you just look this way, it looks like no one else is here. Just you look that way, <laughs> it's pretty busy. <laughs> that wasn't very majestic, was it? <laughs> very graceful. <laughs> it wasn't graceful at all. It is 6.30 at night and we are getting ready to head out. Unheard of, <laughs> going out after dark, this doesn't happen often. We are seeing Nathan Whippy Griggs, so five nights a week in Mataranka you can go see a show, so it's a free show, but they just ask for a donation at the end and you just put in how much you think it's worth. Yeah, we saw him I think about a year and a half ago. He actually came to Chelsea's hometown, One Tree Hill, and did a show there at the pub, and he was good there, so I don't think he's gonna disappoint tonight.
Mataranka this morning and we've headed up the road to Catherine. We are staying at the homestay in... Farmstay. What? Farmstay <laughs> in Catherine. the sign. <laughs> Farmstay, homestay, kind of the same thing. We chose to come out here and support the little guys because some of the caravan parks at this time of year are about 60 bucks a night for power and water, whereas out here I think it's what, 40 bucks a night? Yeah, 40 bucks a night with power and water and it's on a farm. Yeah, and there seems to be so many more smaller campgrounds or hip camps and things like that popping up. So it's nice to go try some different spots. Oh, he's so cute. Have you ever seen a baby camel before? No. Because I just did. Oh, it's so cute. I'll we'll have to go over and try and pat him after. Yeah. Can you pat camels? Or do they spit on you? We are all set up at Catherine Farmstay. We are pleasantly surprised with this place. Because we were able to save a little bit of money on a cheaper camp, we are actually doing the Cutter Cutter Caves tomorrow morning, which we have always driven past but never actually gone in and had a look. First stop in Catherine is the Catherine Hot Springs. This one's probably going to be super busy down here. It's a very popular spot in town. And we did get here on a Sunday on the weekend, so yeah. I feel like everyone might be down here. <laughs> but that's all right. We're just going to go for a quick dip. We've been here before. Um, Catherine Hot Springs are nice, but they're not our favourite. Um, I mean, I don't mind them. I think they're quite a good spot. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what it's like this time. From camp there is actually a little track down to the river so you can come for a little bit of a walk along the river's edge. Now you've got to be careful, it does say there's crocs around so yeah, just steer clear of the water's edge and you should be sweet. As you can see, Juice loves the soft sand. It's going nuts. I really want to let him off lead but I don't want him to get a bit confident with the water and they said no swimming because there's crocodiles so I don't really want to put him at risk. <laughs> no. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the Tonight's dinner is very random. We are desperate for a food shop and I'm kind of just using up whatever's in the fridge and in the caravan. We're gonna make a fried rice. So I cooked some rice earlier and then popped it in the fridge to cool down. Apparently it's the best way to do it. We have garlic, onion, spring onion. Um, we have some leftover pork roast from the other night. This one is like an eggy breakfast thing I made the other day and Bryce didn't really like it. So I've just chopped that up as well. We've got bacon that we cooked and we didn't use, Asian cabbage and some red chilies. Gonna whack that all in, fry it up and hope for the best. All right, I'm pleasantly surprised, but I haven't tried it yet. I mean, it looks like fried rice. It's got all the components. Yeah, it has come up pretty good. You're welcome, guys. That was all me. <laughs> come in to claim the credit. So I was outside talking to my parents on the phone. Juice was asleep in Chelsea's chair. And all of a sudden he gets up and he's sniffing at the door from the outside. And I was like, oh, I reckon Chelsea's cutting up the pork. And sure enough, mm -hmm. Chelsea's cutting up the cooked pork inside here. And he's like, no, nah, let me in, I need some. And he could smell it. Unreal. It's like we don't feed him. Good morning. We we're gearing up and getting ready to go to the Cutter Cutter Caves this morning. And we just had a nice phone call from one of the operators there, the tour operators, saying that they found a snake. So they're moving the 10 o'clock tour to the 11 o'clock tour now. I just assumed that they'd always have snakes and stuff in there, considering it's like a dark cave, but maybe not. Hey, at least they're trying to keep you safe. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. 
Alrighty, we are at the Cutter Cutter Caves. This one was only $35 a person and it goes for an hour, the tour. We've always driven past but never actually been here. So back then there was a big inland sea over this portion of Australia. Any little creature with a shell, when it died would have settled to that sea floor and been compacted into these big limestone walls here. So the cave itself is a lot younger than the limestone, it's about 20 million years old. And the way it's formed is if you imagine a little crack in a big limestone block, water has travelled through that crack each year creating a cave here. Well we've finished up with the tour in the cave now. Um, our experience probably wasn't that great. We wouldn't recommend people to come rushing here to do it. It's not the best caves that we've done. But it could have been just our experience. There was double the amount of people on the tour. So you're constantly like waiting. You're constantly trying to hear what's going on because yeah, there's just so many people. You're so far away so you can't actually like interact. You can't ask questions and I don't know it just makes it a bit not great experience but that was us personally um somebody else might have an amazing experience so yeah yeah in the office at the park they've got a heap of reptiles they've got a few snakes and they've got turtles they've also got two baby crocodiles one salty and one freshy thanks so much for watching another video and a huge shout out to mark craig and gavin for their support this week with the super thanks if you are enjoying them make sure to like and subscribe we'll catch you next week catch ya